Hello, I'm David Guthrie with His Word Lives Ministry, and I'm bringing a sermon message to you today about God the Father and about Him revealing Himself and, and His knowledge in our life through a prayer that He gave the Apostle Paul. I'd like to read this to you. It's in the book of Ephesians in chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I'd like to start off with reading a few verses. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. We start out here where we see the Christians that had received Paul's letters, have uh, uh, news, has gotten back to him that they have a reputation of having faith about the Lord Jesus. I want you to know that they've been saved and their faith in Jesus Christ has reached back to the Apostle Paul. These Christians have found the truth these, pre, these Christians have come on to the truth and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And they believe in Jesus and they have a reputation of having faith in him. Or when we say have faith, we're talking about believing in him. And when we talk about believing in the Bible, we're talking about believing in what Jesus did. Jesus came, left heaven on high, and he came down so that men could be forgiven for their sins through having faith in him and what he did on the cross. He died on that cross. He died on the cross. Jesus died on the cross for your sins and my sins, that if we believe in him as the Son of God and that he was a sacrifice for those sins, we shall be saved and we can continue to have a relationship with Jesus Christ through a reputation of having faith in Jesus Christ and continue believing, believeth on the name of Jesus forever and ever. And these Christians also had a reputation of loving all saints. They had a reputation of faith and they had a reputation of love. Two of the Key godly characteristics of the early Christian. To become a Christian, you must believe and have faith. And God's love comes inside of you. Because the moment that you're saved, God the Holy Spirit comes and indwells or comes and lives inside of the new Christian. And God is love. His love comes inside of us. We have an uh, inherent uh, uh, in, impartation of God's love coming inside of us when we're saved. And we will have a reputation of faith and love as new Christians and as Christians throughout our spiritual life. Praise God that we can have faith and love because of salvation and belief in Jesus Christ. And then the Apostle Paul. He says that he ceases not to pray for these Christians. <clears throat> and he gives thanks and mentions, mentions them in his prayers. He calls upon God the Father. He says, he prays in his prayer that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The apostle Paul, being directed by God himself, calls upon God the Father to give a spirit of wisdom, a wisdom that enables a man to take understanding from relationships with God in prayer, that enables a man to take the holy scriptures of God and understand them and gives them a wisdom of 
a spirit of wisdom or an ability to take this spiritual understanding and apply it into their lives and see uh, how they're to live out and grow as Christians and in their spirituality. And the Apostle Paul also prays for revelation in the knowledge of him that God the Father would be revealed or God the Father's will for the Christians would be known in their life and that God would reveal uh, things to the Christian through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit bearing witness with the spirit of the believer. This is the prayer. This is the desire of God the Father that he would give a spirit of wisdom and a revelation of the knowledge about him and his will in the individual Christian's life. Let's read on to some examples of this. Verse 18, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Let's look here at some examples of the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of God the Father's will in the Christian's life. There is a, <clears throat> an ability for our understanding to be enlightened. I want you to know that there's a time when you read along in the scriptures and you study and you're grasping what the word of God means. And when it comes to you, there's an understanding and there's an enlightening or there's an a lifting in yourself and esteem as you understand and you know how to take what God's doctrine is and apply it into your life in a wise way. And you're spiritually experiencing God's wisdom in your life. And this is an example of what God the Father is giving the Christian. Another thing is to know what is the hope of his calling. God is calling all people that they would come and believe in his son, Jesus Christ, and be forgiven for their sins and have an everlasting relationship with him. That's God's desire that all would be saved. That's his primary calling towards people in the world. God has a hope for all people, a hope that can be accomplished and taken advantage of through belief in Jesus Christ. Do you have that hope in your life? I want to tell you there's all kind of hope around. You can hope for this or you can hope for that. But what's being talked about here is the hope that you can have salvation in your life. It's a hope that is guaranteed by the word of God that if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and what he did on the cross, ye shall be saved. That's a promise by Jesus. That's a promise by God the Father. That's a promise by God the Holy Spirit. God promises you salvation. This is the hope that one day when you die and you stand before God and there's punishment and there's judgment going on, you have a hope that you will be saved and forgiven because you've believed in Jesus Christ. This is the hope that you have, that you will have life, life ever after, forever and ever, even eternal life. This is the hope of his calling. And what Jesus wants you to do today is come and believe on him. Now this is what God the Father would have you to know of his will and to understand and be enlightened to know the hope of his calling. He also would have the Christian to, to know the riches of his inheritance in the saints. 
I want to tell you about the riches of his inheritance. It's beyond measure. We can put money or materials and, and wealth and, and talk about riches, but this riches goes beyond any price tag. This is a riches that uh, gives you a permanent security, permanent blessed assurance that you will be saved and you will not go to hell. You will be saved and you will be in the presence of Jesus in heaven one day, forever and ever. This is the riches of, of the inheritance with all the saints. The saints are the brothers and the sisters that believe on Jesus Christ. Won't you come and know Jesus today? Won't you experience the riches of being a part of the inheritance, salvation, knowing that you are a child of God and you have permanent salvation? What riches, what priceless obtainment you could have these riches of his inheritance. And God the Father would also have us to know and understand his power to us word. God wants you to know that, that when you're born again, that you're raised just like Jesus was raised from the dead. He was raised and brought back to life through the power of the Holy Spirit. This same power raises you with Jesus spiritually. The old man, the old you dies. And there's a new creation that, that takes place inside of you. A new birth. Your spirit is born again. And you're raised up spiritually and born again. And if you're born again, ye shall see the kingdom of God. Ye shall enter into the kingdom of God one day. But I'd also like to talk to you about the power that you have as a Christian. You're being regenerated as a new Christian when you're born again. And you have a newness about you. You have a power from God the Father we're talking about here. And he wants you to know that you have this power about you and that you have a new master, and that's your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's your master now. That's who you obey now. That's who your Lord and your Savior is. You now have the power to turn from that old sin nature. You have the power to turn from sin and your flesh. You have the power to turn from the wily tricks and deception and the killings and the, and, and the stealing that Satan would have do in your life. You now have a new power that's given by God the Father to us work and that we can turn and live differently as saints while we walk even upon this earth today. Now, one day we'll completely be free from the presence of sin. And that when Jesus comes back, we'll have a glorified body. There'll be no more presence of sin. We'll be in the presence of our Lord Jesus one day in a glorified body. And, the, and we'll have this power <clears throat> of resurrection, a power in that our physical body is raised just like Jesus was. And we'll be reunited with our new spirit and glorified and in the presence of our Lord and Savior one day. Praise God for the power that he makes possible. <coughs> Furthermore, I'd like to read verse 20 about this power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. This power, furthermore, 
<clears throat> was brought by God the Father. This power was sent and, and brought into Jesus. And it raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus died on the cross, was put in a tomb, and he came back to life. God the Father sent this power, and this power raised him from the dead. <clears throat> and has now set him at God the Father's own right hand. And that's where our Lord and Savior Jesus is right now. He's at the right hand of the Father. And one day, God the Father will tell him, go and get your church. And Jesus will come and get his church. And this will be the second coming of Christ when this ha happens. But for now, he's set at the, at the Father's right hand. <clears throat> and I want to tell you about this power. His name is far above all things, all names. And Jesus is far above all things, all dominions, all powers, all, all might, all rulers, all anything, angelic, a human being, anything. Jesus is above all things and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he has power over all things. Verse 22 tells us, and have put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. God would have us to know, and gives us the knowledge of his will, and God the Father's knowledge about what Jesus is. He's the Son of God. He's at the right hand of the Father. All things have been put under his feet by God the Father. <clears throat> He's the head over all things to the church. The church, the brothers and sisters that believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They make up the body. And Jesus is the head. And one day there will be a marriage. The church will be the bride of Christ. In Christ, there will be a marriage, supper, and feast. And there will be a union. <coughs> Christ, the head, and the church, the body, will come and be made one. Praise God. And God will, God and Jesus, will, he, he will be fulfilled in that he will be with the body. And the body will be fulfilled. And that we will be with Jesus as one. And all things will be filled in, in Jesus and the body. And all things will be with God and in God through Jesus, his son. And the church, the church, the brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ that came to know the hope of their calling salvation that came to know the inheritance that God the Father made known to us that came to know the power that God gave us the church will be with God forever and ever and ever I want to praise God in this scripture to hear today you know Jesus says if you know me you also know the Father in this scripture here, in this prayer by the Apostle Paul, that God the Father guided Paul in what to say in this scripture and tell about God's will to be made known to the Christians that, uh, um, that believe in Jesus and in the truth and have a reputation of faith and love in their lives and a desire to pray for other Christians to grow spiritually in their life. I hope you enjoyed this message today about this prayer for, about God the Father giving His will to the church and knowledge and a better understanding, too, about the Father. Praise God. If you don't know Jesus today, I encourage you to come and get down on your knees and pray to him and ask him to forgive you for your sins. 
and tell him that you believe in him. You believe in what he did on the cross and you believe that he is the son of God and he will save you and your life will be better and more uh, experiencing more riches than you could ever even imagine. Praise God for what he's made possible for us. Thank you and God bless you.